Sure, there's nothing like a good cappuccino or banana to take start today. Yeah. But um, not like this, ne? I usually buy my cappuccino downstairs, ne? Marie, I'm trying to save myself some randellas for that rainy day, wabona, which might never come, but you don't want it to catch you offside, wabona. So I'm being a barista DIY with my own machine. Here goes nothing. No. Mm-mm. There has to be a better way to save, guys. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. Do we long future savers, wealth builders, and yes, even you, future gazillionaires. Welcome to I Grew It. I'm Tumi Morake, and in this episode, Ed Dololo Dola has some savings issues. Let's listen and see how we can plug them with some info so they can rewrite the story of their finances. Do me, yo, yo. I recently started seeing this girl, and yo, she's amazing, hey? I want to make sure I come correct and impress her properly. But you know how it is, money's tight. I'm trying to figure out how to save some cash so I can take her out and buy nice things, you know, the whole vibe. I don't want to seem like I'm cheap or anything, but I also don't want to go broke and trying to give her a soft life. Can you plug me some tips on how to save money and still live my best life and not lose my dream girl? Help a brute out, do me please. Tawanda. You are the head of savings and investments, right? How did you end up being an expert in this field? And what is it really that fueled this passion you have for finance? I started finance and um, entered the financial services uh, industry right out of uh, varsity. I started off with Barclays and now with, with Absa. But within the industry, I try to find something that I'm passionate about. Uh, and that thing ended up being just helping people realize their dreams, getting them ready for tomorrow. That's why I almost gravitated towards savings and investments, which is what it's all about. As an expert in savings, I'm sure you know about all kinds and tricks to savings, right? I'm particularly curious about stock fells. Tell us a bit more about this particular type of savings. Stock fells are a really cool, if not powerful, uh, South African tradition. It's about a group of individuals coming together, pulling money. Uh, for, for one reason or the other. It could be for buying groceries, uh, paying fees, or getting ready for uh, any eventuality. It's powerful in the sense that it brings communities together towards a common goal, almost the embodiment uh, of the spirit of Ubuntu, which is what makes it uh, a, a really, really powerful mechanism for, call it collective empowerment. So the people come together to help each other save. I also heard from the grapevine that you're an avid runner. You've even taken part in the Comrades Marathon, right? So I'm curious, how does that kind of discipline and mindset translate into savings? Yeah, look, n not just savings, right? But life in general. But life as well, right? yeah. Look, first of all, it's about um, setting yourself a goal. Right? That's how my journey started uh, towards Comrades. Set yourself that goal. This is what I want to do. Same with savings, right? That the most powerful thing you can do for yourself is make that decision that this is what I want to do. Uh, beyond that, it becomes easier. But what you would need is to be determined, right? Persistent, carry on that journey. And before you know it, it becomes a habit, right? It's the same journey that I went through preparing myself for, for Comrade. What started off as a, a 5K run, uh, a puck run, ended up being a 10K, a 21K, and eventually the 90K uh, that, that, that I did at, at Comrade. Uh, the savings journey is the same, right? Um, you start small, keep at it and you'll eventually get there. You can apply that principle to anything in life. Now, I have to know, Brati, can I call you Brati? Sure. Brati, why do we need to save? Like, let's just get real here. Like, because sometimes you, you want to be responsible, but you also feel like life is too short. You also want to enjoy your money. So just give us some motivation because, hey, amen. Like, saving is hard. It, it is hard, um, but you just need to start. Right? In terms of motivation, um, what you want is financial independence, right? You don't want um, each time something comes up, the first thing you want to do is to borrow, right? You want to be ready for those eventualities, right? Sure. Uh, outside of that, if you have a little kitty somewhere, it affords you that chance when an opportunity arises to, to, to take advantage of it. We call it Black Friday. Sure. You don't want to miss out on a really good deal because you don't have the, the cash at hand, right. right? So saving allows you to be ready for any eventuality. 
think of um, retirement, right, when you can no longer work for yourself. You don't want to be that uncle or auntie that is always borrowing money from people. You want to be ready for that. If that's not motivation enough, I don't know what is. It's about getting ready for tomorrow, which is what my passion is. I'm hearing you about, you know, how savings can come in handy, but the question is the how, the how, because we can't still be shoving money into the mud class. I mean, that's too old. You're right. It, it is. Um, there, there are a lot of different uh, instruments out there in the market um, right now that you can make use of, depending on what you're saving for, which is very important to have that goal, what you're saving for. It then determines uh, what sort of instrument or what sort of savings or investment uh, you need to take up. For instance, we have uh, simple savings accounts, right, that allow you to access your funds uh, immediately. You can get into those um, accounts with uh, very little, but also the returns or the interest that you get there is not as significant as you would find um, on a notice deposit. But a notice deposit, you would actually need to give notice before you access your funds. You can't just walk in and say, I want my funds. You need to give notice. That then means the returns you should expect from there are a little higher, but that should align with what you're saving for because of the notice component. There are also fixed deposits. What that entails is you get an interest rate that doesn't change. No matter what happens in the market, the interest rate doesn't change. But you need to keep your money in there for a fixed period. It can be anything from a week to five years. Uh, and um, the tenure of that investment determines um, the, the, the interest that you get in return. The longer, the better. But the key thing is to know what you're saving for. That then guides you into which instrument you take. So the longer you save, the more money you're going to make. Yes. Uh, there's this, uh, someone said uh, compound is, interest is uh, one of the most powerful forces in, in nature, right? The longer you save, uh, before long, there's a point where your contributions uh, into your own savings are outstripped by the interest you're getting. That's because of the compounding interest. So longer is always better, but it really depends on what you're saving for, your time horizon. I'm curious though, if I had like big money now, and then I just saved this money only once a year, but... Like, would I make more money than someone who's saving more often than me? I think the differentiator will be the, the product that you, you, you take up. If someone is depositing uh, a few rands uh, at a time compared to a lump sum, chances are by the end of the year, you're going to have more. Right? A lot of the products out there in the market, they pay you more for putting in more. Yeah. So your interest rate increases as your, the amount that you save uh, increases. So the more, the better. So it only builds up. If you're saving in a bank, if you're saving in a financial institution, not if you're just saving your money somewhere in the drawer somewhere. Yeah, you won't make money babies uh, <laughs> with your, your money under a pillow. <laughs> uh, generally, it's the financial inst institutions that will pay um, the, that interest. Based on what you've said, I have to look at my options based on what I need, right? So how much was I put away if me and my squad want to gazata together and stock fell nyana? Look, there's no amount that's too small. Right. Obviously, the, the, more, um, the more you put aside, the better. Um, the key is to know what you're saving for and the amount that you need in the end. That then determines what you need to be putting aside uh, every month. But a lot of people get detracted from saving because they think you need a, to have a lot of money to start saving. There's no amount that's too, too small. The key thing is to just start. Right, right, right. Now, if we go back to this issue that at dollar or dollar has, right, of how he can save. He wants to save, but he also wants to live the soft life. And the, he has this bay who likes things, right? Like, how can we stay disciplined and, and stick to our savings plans? Like, even when we're tempted by life's little luxuries, unexpected expenses. I mean, you know, especially for a lot of us, we pay this thing called black tax. So how do you stick on that road of savings? Look, it's, it's, it becomes a habit uh, after a while. Uh, but like I've said before, if you have a goal, Right. Say you want to go on a holiday. Uh, that then stops you from just taking money out when you need it. Because you have that, you've visualized what you want to do at the end of it. I think that really helps in creating that discipline. Stock fells, on the other hand, they almost create that discipline uh, just by the mechanism itself. Right? If you save as a group, you, you almost make a promise that this is oh, what yeah. you're going to do. Right? It's, it's not just about you, it's about the whole group. So that... If you can't do it by yourself, stock falls are the way to go because that discipline is inbuilt in the very nature of um, that grouping. I hear you. Like, I, I really I love this idea that you have to be disciplined. And in stock fell example, you are responsible to other people, right? Mara, now, how do we strike the balance? Because now I also want to feel like, ish, 
I'm this savings cafe, everything. I'm going, yeah, yeah, I have savings plans. How do you strike that balance between enjoying your life and saving up for the future? Look, it's not to say uh, saving then means you can't live your life now. Right? And it starts off with creating a budget. Right? You really need to know what you're spending your money on. Sometimes you need to make cutbacks on unnecessary expenditure. That then allows you to create room for, for saving. If you think of it as you're making a plan for your future, right? Yes, you can enjoy it now, right? But you really need to be putting something aside to save for the future. One of the things that I've told people that has worked for me in the past is you can save in pockets, right? You don't necessarily need to put all your savings in one place. You can save for one different thing, for a rainy day, for drinks on Fridays. If a funeral comes up, you, you can save for many different things in different pockets. That then allows you to access different, those different pockets when you need them for, for different things. Actually, besties, hey, Tawanda has put me on, hold on. <laughs> Chomi, let's take a trip out of the group chat, ne? One word, stock fell. <laughs> Changura's friend, we're going to eat. Find out how to save for your goals and rewrite the story of your finances with I Grew It. Absa, your story matters. Ooh.